Welcome to Photo Work. Today we are interviewing fashion photographer Graham Dunn. Now he's based in LA and has had clients such as Abercrombie, Anthropology, and Free People. And in this episode, he shares with us how he got started, how he gets narrative in his images, and how he honed his voice as a photographer. Oh, and how to keep pigeons out of the studio. Well, actually, it was how Mylan got the studio, the pigeon out of the studio. <laughs> That's true. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Your studio is beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, you have all these cool. plants here. Thanks. We're just going to move in. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> Big couch over there. Yeah. <laughs> do you there. like dogs? We have two dogs. Uh, I have a toy poodle. Yes, I do. Oh, nice. I like dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I do indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what we want to do is start out with uh, asking you your story. Like, where'd you come from? How'd you get here? Okay, um, I grew up in Ojai, California, which is like a country town a little north, uh, like kind of near Santa Barbara, Ventura. Um, I grew up there, uh, kind of a rural, you know, hanging out in the backyard with my brother kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, I went to Texas for school and then uh, I was working in commercials. I was doing like post-production and like green screen and this kind of stuff. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, and then I was shooting like a lot of plates and things for skies and time lapses and things. Um, and I just thought that was super interesting. And um, I liked that, I guess I was put off slightly by the amount of trucks and gear and people needed for a commercial, you know? Yeah. And um, like, it, it was really cool, but it felt really far away. Like I would never get there, you know? So I started shooting stills. My wife had a little Nikon um, I just borrowed and um, I, I ended up really liking it, you know? So. Um, then the economy crashed in 2009. My wife and I moved to California because we had nothing keeping us there. Um, I went to Art Center for like three months and then uh, I just started shooting full time and just gave it a go and kept going, basically. Here yeah. I am. Yeah, here you are. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what were you studying at Art Center? Was it photography still? It was photography also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I did sort of like before I did communication, like film theory kind of, but nothing mm -hmm. like. Uh, practical, you know, so mm -hmm. I wanted to like touch the lights and see how it all worked and I got a taste of that doing the commercial stuff um, and so, but I didn't stick with it and I was also much older than everyone there, you know, I'd already been through school and stuff so I thought like, okay, I'll just like watch some YouTube videos and give it a go. And save yeah. yourself, uh, save yourself a million dollars. Yeah, also that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah, it was cool, like I, I could see why school would be great for some people, especially like if you're um, you know, out of high school or something, I, I could really see the value in that. But, um, uh, and there was one great fashion photography teacher there, Paul Jasmine, who's like a legend photographer here, um, or just in the world probably. But um, I'd have to stay for like a full year before I got to take his class. So I was like, I gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, so I did. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I enjoyed my time there. Yeah. yeah. As brief as it was. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. No, I was yeah. excited about shooting plates. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is pretty fun. Did you all study photography? A little bit in school. Uh -huh. I have a communication design okay. um, background. Mm -hmm. um, photography was always my passion, but, like, I wanted a backup plan, right? Yeah, that's smart. So, but I ended up doing photography anyway. I'm that's all, cool. I'm all practical. Yeah. I went to college for a little bit, and I'm like, nope, I already have a job in it, so I'm going to learn that way. Yeah. I've never been a good school, so it was like, let me just get the experience. Yeah, learn mm -hmm. as you learn as you do it yeah yeah, yeah. Think, uh, you learned like so much so fast that way too i think you know yeah like a bit of both's good but yeah yeah tri trial and error is the <laughs> the way trial and error is good. the way yeah yeah failure is definitely the way oh it's a good teacher <laughs> yes it's a, it's a harsh lesson <laughs> harsh teacher <laughs> yeah. it does, it oh. does help you yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh um and now you're in downtown LA and are in your studio today. And um, so how long have you been shooting overall? Um, I went full time uh, 2010 mm -hmm. and it was like a slow start, you know, and it's, you know, it really like ebbs and flows, I think. Mm -hmm. um, this studio I got with a buddy of mine um, who I work with a lot and uh, we share it and it's, you know, like a nice daylight spot. Um, I don't shoot in here a whole ton. I'm, most of the stuff I do is outdoors, you know, and him too actually, but, um, we just thought it'd be nice to have a space and it's, you know, and, and actually there's studios upstairs, like three floors up that we used to rent all the time. So now we just rent this instead, nice. but it's nice just to have a little beat laboratory here. We can mess around in. Yeah. 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 Um, I love the light. Yeah. The windows are really, really good. And, and you can close these curtains and kind of like overpower it too, if you need. So it's kind of, it's pretty versatile. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. It's nice to like experiment because you don't always have good light and you need to know like 
how to make something cool when yeah. it's not sunny. So when it's yeah, not yeah. sunny. Yeah. Which is not often here, right? Not often here, although <laughs> this man, winter. It's been rainy. I think I've shot like six days in the rain this year. Oh, it's really? Been, yeah, it's yeah. been very rainy. Which is very strange, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that strange. is strange. I mean, it's nice. Like, it's super nice uh, for California, but mm -hmm. it's tough on the shoots because nobody comes here. Like, nobody wants that. Everybody yeah. wants, like, some springtime or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, always, pretty much always clothes. Mm -hmm. Always fashion stuff, portraits, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, but yeah, ten, 10 years full time. I travel sometimes, mostly I shoot here. Um, I do some motion stuff, a lot of film. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> That's what and, I um, and was it like, uh, as far as like getting your business going, was it like really fast or was there some times where it was like kind of? It was, it was uh, no, it was a slow wind up I think. Um, I signed to an agency pretty young, I think, um, and I didn't really know know a lot, you know, and I kind of just um, was shooting with friends and stuff like that. I have one friend, Kelly Ash, who's a stylist, and she was she models still, but she was like especially modeling at that time, and so like we like collaborated on stuff, like so many shoots, like 50, 100 shoots, I don't know, but many, many over the years, you know, and so, um, and she's like got a good sense of narrative and like, um, you know, she's got a passion for it, I guess. So, so we collaborate on that, and we kind of just like we're both kind of figuring out like what would be cool, and you know, our style and that kind of stuff. Um, and so, yeah, she's been a frequent collaborator among like many, many other people. But um, yeah, so I think like I kind of worked out a lot of things just like trying stuff with her, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're still like good friends. Like I'm working with her on Tuesday, so. Awesome. Yeah. It's nice to like come up together and then still be working together, right? Oh yeah, it's super nice. Yeah, yeah, and like you know, yeah. Like I said, it ebbs and flows, but we always we always have yeah. worked together. Yeah, um, so that's cool. Yeah, so I've been just cranking away. Yeah, I guess nine nine years, ten years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was a, it's. I mean, it always like you always have stuff you are like aspiring to, and so it always feels slow to me. I always feel like it's like a right slow journey. You know. Yep. D does it? Feel yeah, like oh, yeah, definitely oh, feels yeah. slow. Yeah. But then you look back and you're like, wow, okay. I can yeah. see the difference. You have to stop and look back, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like at the end of the year, if you do a little roundup and go like, I'm proud of these five things this year, even though you did like a million things. You know? <laughs> That's good. But in the in the time, you're like, you know, it's, uh, I find it, I've heard people say like, oh yeah, photography is just like a technical thing. It's kind of easy once you know it and stuff like that. But I find it difficult every single time, to be honest. Um, and that's partly like what's so interesting about it too. It's like mm -hmm. it, it drives you to like learn more and try new things and like it's never boring, but it, uh, I find it tough actually. I find it difficult, you know? Yeah, it's always a problem to solve. Yeah, yeah, you've got to have a mind for that, I think. Yeah. Um, and like you have to embrace that and like enjoy that a bit, I think. Yeah. Because if, if you hit a speed bump and are like, I don't know what to do, it's trouble, you know? So. Yep. Yeah, because there's always yeah. speed bumps. There are so many. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Literally yeah. every time you shoot, right? Well, at least for every us. Time. It seems well, like it's I mean, every time. Every there's location. some sort of little There's something. always something like, Light. oh, there's crazy wind or this mountain's in the way of the sun or whatever. You know, yeah. it, like you can't always wrangle everything, you know? So <laughs> We try, but. Yeah. There's a, there's a tourist over your shoulder shooting shots of your model. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. <laughs> and she was rocking a 5D. <laughs> Probably pretty okay since you set set the model in the spot you wanted. The light, and, uh, right? The yeah. light. She location, just was taking yeah. the shots. Styling, yeah, That's all of it. Very weird. <laughs> Side note to people who don't know what we're talking about: we had a shoot yesterday in Wildflowers, and it was overrun with tourists. <laughs> so I want to talk to you about how. I mean, you mentioned a little bit, but how did you hone in on your voice as a photographer? I I feel like I'm still always doing that, and like some people would be like. Like sometimes I'll be on a job and they'll say, "Oh, just do your thing," and and I kind of don't know what that is actually. I think because it's inside your head, like you don't know that really. I think over time, like certain trends and things come through, or like you find what works well, or there's always some thread of something, even if the lighting's different or whatever it is. But there's some thread through there. I mean, I think whatever that voice is, like I know I know the kind of tenets, you know, but if I try to really spell them out, it's hard. It's like more deeply ingrained in, than that. I think then you can just like write down like these 10 things are me or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, but um, yeah, I think just shooting a lot over time, like then you start to figure out like, I like these things and this didn't work or like you keep going back to certain things. Like f for me, like 
um, shooting people kind of as they are, um, maybe like a vaguely documentary style, I think. Like, I like to um, kind of react back and forth with the model um, and see, like, what are they like? Are they serious? Are they goofy? Are they whatever they are, you know? And then I'll kind of like run with that and set the mode of the shoot into that realm, you know, I guess. And, and so for jobs, casting's super important because you need to know the tone you need to know the tone of the brand and what they're looking for and cast not just based on like, this person looks like this, but this person has this personality. Because I think a lot of it is like this back and forth, like I follow them, they follow me kind of thing. Um, so that's a big part of it, as opposed to setting up very careful lighting and um, you know, like making someone like a sculpture kind of, which that works for some people. Um, it's never worked for me personally, but um, so yeah, I think that, um, I like the outdoors, I like broad light and kind of like freedom to move around and like experiment and and like basically like I try to get all my ducks in a row like whether that's scouting or production or whatever first so that like in that moment I can be pretty free and react to things that are happening you know because um, if like this giant rock over here looks pretty interesting like we didn't know that was going to be there but there it is so we'll go shoot with that you know or whatever it is like being reactive a bit I think is helpful um and so, yeah, I think like just shooting a lot over time, I sort of figured out the things that I like or they would make like a picture of mine and not someone else's, even though I can't exactly pin down for you. What is that? Mm -hmm. You know, is that? Do you, I'm with you. Is that, yeah, you feel I, that? Everybody, I, we try to define it and it's so hard to define. Uh -huh. like, I don't even know how, where to begin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Someone asked us the other day, we're like, I don't know, actually. Yeah. yeah. But you see your work and feel Mm -hmm. A thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's uh -huh. a thread at least. Yeah, yeah. How, how to define that? That's hard. Yeah, it's hard. So yeah, we really resonated with what you said because it's like it's inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's like deep seated in a way. It's like your childhood or what you know. Like I think it's a big part of all that stuff. Is like, like do you do you try to shoot as one mind when you shoot together, or do you try to both get your own things and it's, take two spins on it? I try to take a different spin, mm -hmm. and it always looks different. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's the same shot, slightly different angles, totally different pictures. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. The, but there feels like it sounds really cheesy, but like a synergy. There's almost like an energy between the two of us. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then that back towards the model, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'd be curious from their perspective what that's like too, because I noticed there's a decent amount of team. I'm. There's some super famous teams, and I notice a, a lot of people have started shooting as teams, um, and it seems that seems like a cool way to work. Actually, I'm interested in that. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like what I mentioned earlier. It's it's like photography is kind of a lonely career if you're by yourself. It seems like uh, it can be. It can yeah. be. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hours sitting at a desk, retouching or selects, making selects or color grading. Yeah, that yeah. stuff can be can be meditative too. Maybe mm -hmm. it's nice to be like on set with like like. I feel like only in the last few years I've started to really have recurring collaborators where I'm like, um, feel very comfortable with them, you know, and that's, that really makes all the difference. Cause when you're on a job where it's like a lot more pressure, um, it really is nice to like have a little family there, you know, and it, I think it takes time. Um, and then, and then that's nice to have that. You yeah. Know? It helps take the edge off the, you know, whatever tensions are in the back of your mind, you know? Yeah. So. The stress of getting the job done, I feel like. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's tough to do something that's like loose and free form and creative, but you have to do it in this window in this time in this place with mm -hmm. these things, you know, um, it's, it's a balancing act, I guess, you know. So your images often have a narrative to them. Mm -hmm. And I was really wanting to know, you're like, how, where did that come from for you? How do you do that so well? Cause it's incredible. Thank you. Um, I think a big part of that is growing up in the country and like using my imagination in the backyard and that kind of stuff. A big part of it's my parents. Um, my mom's like very, she's super artistic in many, many ways. Like she can do like many different uh, disciplines, I guess. So I think some of that uh, came through and my dad's a travel writer. Um, and so I think like travel and adventure and also um, getting your thoughts like you don't necessarily just outright say something, but you hint at something or you uh, give someone a sense of the experience. Like I think even though he's writing and I'm taking pictures, there's a lot of connection there as well. So I think both of them and um, you know that sort of stuff. And also wanting to shoot outdoors and like on interesting locations 
And um, like I get a little lost sometimes when I'm shooting a job and it'll be like in a you know beautiful house, but it's like a glass box, you know. And I'm like, this is a really aesthetically pleasing house, but I, I don't have a sense of like what. There's not like a patina there, you know, or something. So I'm more inspired by like the desert or like a junkyard or like a dirty wall or you know stuff that's not like outright uh, aesthetically pleasing, I guess, um, because there's some hint of like a history there and that sort of thing. And so that I think comes in a lot. Um, a lot of it's in the styling for sure. Uh, I'm super inspired by certain models and how they are because they're like actors and they can do, uh, like people think like, oh, you just look pretty or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, it's a skill set. And also it's like a ability to go to a place in your mind that's like, I always, I always hearken back to childhood, but it could be anywhere. It's just an imaginative place basically where they can see something and interact with it and be in the now enough to um, try that. You know, basically, like I, I really appreciate people taking risks and that sort of stuff, and I'll react to that. You know, and, and I'll try to set a sense of like fun or adventure or like this is a free space where we can mess around, basically. And so I think that's how you get some of those hints of narrative. Some of it's the editing and after the fact, like you choose uh, you choose photos that hint at something. Like maybe maybe it's just as simple as like it could be a stu it could be against a white wall, but it's like someone just looking off camera slightly, and it's like that micro expression you think. What are they looking at? Or, or there's like something that's not just a purely a smile. Like maybe there's something just slightly off about the photo, or whatever it is, or a little surrealism, or those opportunistic kind of moments. Like all those things, I think, hint at narrative, even if you're not like uh, specifically telling a story. You know, um, I also really like portraiture a lot. Um, I'm sure everyone talks about Avedon's American West, but I do find that super inspiring. Um, and so I think that kind of stuff that just looks like you see the character in someone's face by them just looking at you basically like they're just regarding you. It's not like a judgment or anything. It's just like they're looking at you. I like that a lot. I'll never get tired of people's faces, I think. So yeah, that's the long answer of that oh, the narrative. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Felt the magic. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. There's something really interesting about storytelling, I think, you know, um, it, it, yeah. It's cool. It's cool to like, because too, going into it, you don't always know what it'll be or how it'll come out. You have a sense of it, but it's like when someone asks for a mood board or something, you're like, well, here's a bunch of other stuff, but it's not going to look like this. Actually, I don't really love mood boards, even though you got to do them because yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never going to look like that, you know, and it's never like going to be those things or, and you don't want it to be honestly, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's a hurdle. Um, yeah, yeah, it's more of a hurdle. I mean, it helps to get your ducks in a row for styling and hair and makeup and casting and all these right. type of things. But mm -hmm. um, in terms of what the actual photos are look like, like I never really know. I kind of know, but I don't always know. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm with that's, you. I think that's the case. You shoot mostly location. We love location. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I feel like we get more inspiration in location. Yeah. I feel so confined to a studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do it, but. There's, you don't have that, I don't know, that feeling. Yeah. You get a feeling when, I, when I'm outdoors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, I could shoot any of this. Mm -hmm. If I just rotate 10 degrees, totally different shot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Where our studio, it's, you have to you know, move lights and change backgrounds, I feel. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. react differently, too, I think. Oh, yeah. Some people like it, studio, mm -hmm. I think, or they're really trained in that because they lived in New York or something where the weather's you know, more, more studio based, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, I feel like people react differently to, you know, m being outdoors or the scenario yeah. there. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we also, you also shoot motion. Yeah, I do, yeah. Um, do you think that gives you an edge when getting hired for, uh, for jobs for, other, for certain clients? They see that and like, oh, that's an extra thing I can. Yeah. Yes and no. Um, I do think so. More and more there's a motion team now, especially on like um, more elaborate jobs or, or bigger crews or whatever, they'll bring in a motion team just so they can really focus, I think. And sometimes those people are in house and they really know the assets they need or sometimes they're just really, really good and they're very focused on motion only. Um, it just depends because a lot of things now, it's like they're moving components, but it's not like a narrative piece. It's not like a this is a one minute little edit. It's more like this is almost like a GIF or something, GIF, GIF. It's like a moving, yep. you know, like just a little loop of motion or something, which I, I think is really cool actually. Um, and I think probably marketing supports that being a, a um, you know, enticing thing on jobs. So yes, 
I think it's, I think people like it, you know, and, and I do that fairly often. Um, it's a little hard for my mind to split both, but I, but I do it because I like yeah. it, so I'll do it anyhow. Um, and I think, so it's probably like 50%, that's a bonus for people, 50%, they're gonna bring in a motion team anyway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do both, like I just did a job recently and I would shoot the film motion and stills, and someone else is shooting the digital, mm -hmm. um, and that happens fairly often, you know? Um, I think the more you can do, the better, probably, you know? Yeah. Even if it's just within your own mind, like you know this job from more aspects, you know? It's like if you were an actor and you'd also direct it and you'd also been a cinematographer, like that's probably all super helpful, right. um, even if you're not practically shooting it, you know? And, and that's the other thing is like, when I shoot motion, I like, sh I like to shoot through the viewfinder because it's most like taking pictures and I kind of am just like, unless it's a narrative thing and it's very set up, usually it's more like gestural and so I'm just like kind of barking at people while I'm looking through the viewfinder and that helps um, to shoot that way but that's not always what a brand would want, you know? Like sometimes they want someone who's more focused or sometimes they want a DP to shoot it and you're kind of directing it, directing it but usually it's very loose so I'd almost prefer like the DP to run with it because they're very focused on motion and then I'd rather just do the stills or I'll do both. Mm -hmm. But splitting it's tricky, I think, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the more you can do, the better, I guess. Nice. I think, yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's just the re reason we're asking is we're trying to teach people. It's like, here's, here's some things. If you want to do motion, yeah. is add value to it. And we, I think it, it does, does for sure. I mean, if, even if it's just yeah. you know, having that knowledge. Yeah, I think that knowledge, um, that way of working, that mindset, being able to do things quickly, um, I think it helps you with directing, which is helpful for stills yeah. and video. Um, I think all of that is good. It keeps you up on technology, which is like, you don't want to go too far down the, I'll, I'll go all day on the camera nerd stuff, but mm -hmm. um, it is helpful to know the technology, you know, and mm -hmm. all that. So yeah, I think the more you can do, the better, and also because of Instagram and stories and all this stuff, like motion is really, like now a lot of jobs are shooting so much media at once and or they're doing it so often, you know? It's not like one mega shoot and they get it all, it's like many shoots where they're gathering a lot of media, you know, basically like it's like stuff for email, stuff for website, yeah. stuff for print, stuff for Instagram clips or whatever, you know? So they just seem to gather data basically and so the more data you can gather, better, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's fun. I mean, it's really interesting, it's different. It's a different discipline, I think. I was going to ask you, what's your best marketing advice to get, everyone wants to know, the big names like anthropology, free people, all that kind of stuff. <sighs> this, it's funny because like, it's not like, well, well not that it's simple in a more structured world, like, but you kind of know like, okay, well now I'm, a, now I'm a VP, now I'm, I mean, I don't know if you become president, but whatever, you know, there's like a, there's like a corporate structure and in photography that doesn't exist, you know, so. I think, you know, it's a lot of it is by luck and by chance and by constantly producing work, you know, like I think always making work is good, um, even sometimes it's, if it's not good, you know, you, like I always just try to learn one thing, even if I'm like this shoot was a bust, it's terrible, I'll, I'll still try to just learn something that I could use later, even if it's like don't do that, you know, <laughs> which happens. And so like always shooting I think is important. Um, Working with people you like and who are creative is helpful. You know, I never have got, gotten work from like, I went to this, not to say you shouldn't, but mm -hmm. I've never gotten work from going to like some mixer or industry event or like trying to hustle in that way. It's always been like word of mouth or like this person mm -hmm. was at this magazine and now they're working for this brand or like someone recommended. And I try to recommend people I like too in the same way, you know, and it's kind of this circular thing. So I think that is super helpful. And by always like, shooting a lot and practicing and producing work, you meet more of those people and those people are fanning out too. So then you're just kind of like making your ripples bigger. And I think that process is pretty slow. Um, so it feels disheartening at first or, or just at times, you know, but I think like having the wherewithal to just push through also is really helpful. Like just keep going, keep going, keep going, you know, and you can just always like put those bad shoots in a closet, you know, cause they will exist. Um, <laughs> So I think that's super helpful. And then the other big one I think is Instagram. You know what, like so much work I get comes off Instagram just by some random chance and I had no idea. Or like one, one big job I got was because I shot this, I shot her first test when she came 
to the US just for fun. Like we kind of emailed and I knew her boyfriend a little bit. And so like I just, he was a translator, he helped us and um, cause she didn't speak um, like perfect English or anything and I didn't speak Portuguese. So he translated, shot her first test and then she just blew up cause she's amazing. And uh, like she's a very good model. And so she just blew up huge. And then I shot her again years later and um, this brand had just worked with her and liked her. So then they were like, oh, we saw you shot this. and. That then I got a job from that, and I never knew it was coming. It was something I just actually just spent money on. Like I just paid to process the film. I shot her for like an hour, and it got me a job, like on accident. So you never know, basically. But I think if you just keep producing stuff and putting it out there, then people will see it. You know, and and the right people will see it. Even if you have like ten followers, if one of those people is someone who liked it, maybe you get the job from that. You know, I don't think it's like necessarily. I don't. I try not to believe it's like a huge numbers game, you know, because it's been like, there's a lot of talk about it, obviously, about Instagram and this stuff, but I do think it's helpful. I'm not that good about posting on there, um, but I think that's super helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us on Photo Work. Now, be sure to check out part two of our interview with Graham, where he talks about what it's like to work with such big brands. Oh, and less pigeons this time. We'll see you later. <laughs>